Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. I'm Juliette Sin. I'm here with Bay Action Assange, and we're here to support Assange and Snowden and whistleblowers and free press, which is probably under the greatest threat it's ever been. Um, these bills would help not just strengthen the laws to um, allow for free press, but it would protect the whistleblowers and allow them to tell us the truth. That's, it's in our best interest, it's in business's best interest, it's really in everybody's best interest to know the truth behind what's going on with the government, businesses, um, banks. He's, uh, Assange has exposed pedophile rings, uh, government corruption, criminal behavior in pretty much all walks of life and in, in basically every continent. Um, why America chooses to be the one to try to punish this hero makes me sad and sickened and you know a little bit ashamed that it's our government that's persecuting an Australian um, for telling the world the truth. He's a hero. He's an absolute hero. And I mean it's up to us now to save him because the mainstream media is ignoring this because the big six are owned by those corporations. Many of the banks and corporations he exposed are the people involved in those media corporations. They've pretty much ignored what we do out here. They've ignored attempts by celebrities, um, Roger Waters, Pamela Anderson, to try to bring light to this. And yet he's still being tortured. He's still being tortured in a jail for telling the people the truth. And so many, so many times I hear this, well, it, it harmed people, the truth harmed people. They have tried and wanted to find evidence that it had actually harmed people or put someone in harm's way. And WikiLeaks was extremely careful and it did not. And really what this comes down to is America, our government, is embarrassed. They're embarrassed that they were caught out with not just criminal behavior, but gross acts against humanity, civilians, children. And this is what he exposed and they want him, they want him gone. And the treatment in Belmarsh prison as of this week is he's without clothes, warm clothes. I mean, he has basic prison, you know, attire, but it's cotton and cold and that prison is cold and there's COVID in that prison. He has pre-existing lung conditions and they, they've put him in a jail with COVID, dressed in cotton jail attire. And basically, I think the hope is, is that he dies and that then they can just say, well, he died of COVID and then the mainstream media will write him off. But that's just, that's not gonna happen because too many people know what he's done and he's saved so many people by just exposing the truth, like all brave journalists. And that's why these bills that Tulsi Gabbard has put forward are so important. And I think it shows that we can work together because they have a libertarian signed on, they have um, Republicans signed on. So, I mean, it's, it's a tri-party bill and, and it shows that we can be unified in truth. And, and I think that, I think we are as a people, we're not as divided as the media likes us to think. And, and these bills, um, two of them are to help specifically Assange and Snowden. And there's another important bill that is to reform the Espionage Act, which is extremely broad. And technically, here goes our, <laughs> um, they can use the espionage against any of us. None of us are safe as long as the wording in that is as broad and really horribly written as it is. The fact that it's used against journalists telling the truth is, is really just something the government's had in their back pocket to use as an excuse to um, terrorize journalists out of exposing their crimes. I mean, there's an illusion that we've had a change in administration. Um, we've had, we have a different person 
as our figurehead and for the, the media to um, basically, I think, keep us distracted with while all the, the real issues are ignored by the free press. <laughs> um, and they both pursued Assange, Obama, and Trump. And um, they have both only tried to strengthen laws like the Espionage Act that would harm whistleblowers. And I mean, right now the heroes in our government are the very few, very few <laughs> uh, politicians who are standing up for our human rights and our free press, and, and it's a small number. Sadly, it is a small number, and, and it doesn't belong to a, a single political party. Um, the Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Green, none of them can claim to, you know, have the majority of these honest, good people. They just seem to pop up, and they seem to have the integrity to stand against these powerful elites who are posing as our representatives. But. I mean, how many of us can say that our representatives represent us? So, Lo so Zoe Lofgren is with the Judicial Committee? Um, she's District 19, and she has the, the power to sign on and show her support for this, which would be massive, because we need other people to show support, or this will die. As, as of January, this, this will um, have to be given a new number, started up again, um, and Tulsi won't be there to really be a part of that um, unless she voluntarily decides to jump on, um, which she may, you know, senators are allowed to, and, and Congress um, people in the House of Representatives are allowed to do that. But um, we can't let this die. All three of them have to stay alive. They have to get pushed forward. Um, and, and I actually have a lot of faith in Zoe Lofgren. She's, she's one of the few that took the courageous stance to not, not reenact the Patriot Act. She decided to stand against many of her colleagues on this. Um, most of the people who are in power right now, Biden, Harris, they all voted yes. Um, but Zoe Lofgren has been known to stand on her own and do what's right. So I really think that we have a good chance to convince her. Oh, Youth for Assange. Well, that's a, a South Bay group that started with some students who were concerned about free press and whistleblowers. And Snowden and Assange were, of course, people that they considered to be heroes. And they asked me about you know what I knew about it and what was going on and and the more I told them and the more information I sent them the more they wanted to do something themselves and they started a Youth for Assange group that goes around the South Bay and pretty much puts ribbons everywhere and they did a candle vigil in Morgan Hill um, and Los Gatos and I know they're planning a candle vigil in January um, right before the final verdict on the trial and um, they're a really great group of kids they, they come from all walks of life and you know they take that time out of their their week when they're studying and zooming now and <laughs> they tried to get a, a zoom meeting going that was international um, they tried to invite other other young people, uh, teenagers and college, to join them, but they haven't had any luck because it would seem that, <laughs> I mean, not to sound like a person who believes in you know, conspiracy theories, but it was, we checked and every time we put the information out for the Youth Assange Zoom meetings, we seemed to get shadow banned, whatever her account was promoting it. <laughs> so I don't think a lot of people even saw the invitation. So but we are we are hoping to connect the kids to other, you know, intelligent, thoughtful, compassionate youth who want to help free Assange. Um, not even just to help whistleblowers, but to connect these kids, because I think that youth is powerful. And I think if they can connect and 
inspire each other, they can do a lot of good for a lot of causes, you know, and not feel so alone. And I think that the kids right now, for obvious reasons, feel very isolated. And to be able to reach out to other young people would be wonderful for them. And as a teacher, I feel it's vital to have those connections right now because I'm really starting to see the cracks in the kids. They're, they're isolated and they're frustrated and they feel powerless by what they see going on in this country. And they want to help and they don't know how. Um, they're so limited, you know, when you're told to stay home and not go to school and not connect with other young people, you know, they feel like their hands are tied behind their backs and this gave them a chance to feel like they could do something. Yeah. I think we have a good A good what? I think she's a good So maybe you can talk about why you're out here. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is David Ledesma. I'm from San Jose, California. And I'm out here to support the assembly bills that uh, have been introduced by Representative Tulsi Gabbard and others to, uh, to free Julian Assange and Edward Snowden and uh, it's, we're, we need to have a free press in America and around the world. So, um, you know, the United States is trying to suppress that and it's important that people stand up and show that there's opposition to that. So Lofgren, who's a representative in this district here. Um, yeah, we, uh, we're at her office here today and uh, we're encouraging her to support the bills. AB uh, 1162. Uh, uh, right. Well, the House bill. HR. HR 1162, 1175, and, and HR 8452. Hi, I'm Jeannie, and we're out here for Julian Assange today, and actually for human rights for all the journalists and whistleblowers who are persecuted, jailed, and tortured. And we're here to stand up for them and to express the will of the people. We're going to our Congress people and asking them to sign, um, to sponsor, support um, Tulsi's resolution. So we have a House Resolution 1175 for Julian Assange, and we have Resolution 1162 to pardon Snowden. And if we can't get those into action as soon as possible, we're hoping that we'll get support to reintroduce them in the upcoming Congress. His life isn't treacherous, he's in treacherous circumstances right now. His life is in jeopardy because he's in a cell block where a lot of the prisoners, like about 70% of the prisoners, have COVID and um, there's rampant transmission. We're doing everything we can to, to help him get back, you know, at least released from prison. At the very least, for a man who's committed no crimes and yet he's in the worst prison in the UK. So. However, bringing him back, extraditing him to the United States would put him in even more dire circumstances and limit his family to seeing him, and his, his torture would continue, far worse than it has. So, extraditing an innocent man doesn't serve anyone's purpose. It just shows the power of the oligarchy in our country and their cooperation to protect the elite and not listen to the citizens, or the whistleblowers, the truth tellers. Thank you. Hey, my name is Steve Zeltzer. I'm here. I'm with the uh, Bay Action Committee to Free Julian Assange and also United Front Committee for a Labor Party. And we're here today on uh, uh, December the 10th in front of Congresswoman Pelosi's home. And we would be in Washington, but we don't live in Washington. So uh, what we're calling on her and demanding is that she endorse and co-sponsor uh, resolution 1175 and 1162. These resolutions were introduced by uh, Tulsi Gabbard and others to call for the dropping of charges against Julian Assange and against Edward Snowden. And th this issue of uh, democracy, defending whistleblowers and journalists is critical. And that's why we're having this uh, action in front of Nancy, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi's house. She's the leader of the Democrats, she's the leader of the Congress, and I think it's time that we uh, stood for journalists and whistleblowers, and uh, she should not be supporting the war agenda. That's what we're saying here. And what is the war agenda? Well, the Congress just passed a bill over $700 billion for war. 
they seem to have a lot of agreement on that. And that's despite the fact that people in San Francisco and around this country are dying in the streets. They don't have health care. They don't have enough hospitals. We don't have national health care, but apparently we have money for war. And one of the things that we can say about Julian Assange and Edward Snowden is that they, the information they released showed the role of the United States around the world. And also, Julian Assange's um, uh, WikiLeaks exposed the fact that U.S. Uh, military were involved in war crimes in Iraq. They were massacring journalists and other uh, human, human beings in Iraq. And the sad situation is, and the terrible situation is that the people who committed these war crimes are not prosecuted, but they prosecute the whistleblowers. They prosecuted uh, Julian Assange uh, for exposing the fact that the United States was engaged in war crimes in Iraq, supposedly to protect democracy. And that's what we were there for. But that's the reason the United States goes all over the world, to protect democracy. But you look at this country right now, as far as democracy, uh, workers, uh, uh, blacks in uh, Georgia have been uh, prevented from voting. Uh, in North Carolina, uh, workers, working people here, particularly minorities, are prevented from uh, voting and excluded from the ballot. So I think that we have to start in the United States and we have to start with the fight to defend these, these people who are struggling for democracy, real democracy, which is Julian Assange, uh, journalist, WikiLeaks founder, and um, Edward Snowden, who was a whistleblower and exposed the NSA illegal activities, illegal spying. And again, when uh, Snowden exposed that, the officials in the government denied it, they lied, they haven't been prosecuted. So the very people that were engaged in illegal activities have gotten off the hook and not been prosecuted, but they prosecute Edward Snowden. So anyway, uh, we're demanding again that uh, Congresswoman Pelosi support these bills, 1175 and 1162. Our next speaker is Edward Escobar, and he's uh, with the Alliance and with supporting gig workers and in in this state and internationally. Welcome. Oh, okay. You want to, and he's going to read a statement by Daryl Whitman, who is a uh, whistleblower. In fact, he's a whistleblower in San Francisco at the Federal OSHA Whistleblower Protection Program, uh, Division Nine or District Nine of OSHA. And right here in San Francisco, he uh, blew the whistle, or he was defending uh, whistleblowers at FedEx, at uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, at, a law, at, at, at uh, the Test America, which was involved in a uh, scandal as far as testing of uh, toxins at Hunters Point Shipyard. And uh, Michael Madry, who he investigated his case, uh, exposed the fact that there was fraud there. And what happened is they went after, they went after him. They went after uh, uh, not only Michael Madry, but they went after uh, Daryl Whitman. And he is a, he's with now a group called United Whistleblowers, uh, uh, United Whistleblowers, which is a national group of whistleblowers around the country who are uh, fighting for justice, fi fighting against the corruption in the government. And he's written a statement today uh, for this event that we're having at Congresswoman Pelosi. Uh, it, people that he was investigating, whistleblowers, actually went to uh, Nancy Pelosi and provided her with information, documents about the uh, fact that um, uh, Air Test America had falsified tests uh, as far as asbestos at Hunters Point and uh, she should be prosecuted. Good afternoon, my name is Edward Escobar. I'm the founder of the Alliance for Independent Workers and we have the campaign hashtag Essential Workers Unite as well as hashtag Drivers Unite Movement. That's an international movement. Uh, we are here protecting the existential needs for workers across the globe that are essential workers. Daryl Whitman. Um, He's a former OSHA WPP investigator. Okay, there is no more important freedom guaranteed by a constitution than the First Amendment's freedom to speak the truth to power. And here, that spoken truth. Ed Snowden's courageous revelation about the systemic capture and collection of private information by the national security state ranks alongside Daniel Ellsberg's revelations of war crimes a half a century ago as a singular moment in the long struggle against abuse of power by seemingly unaccountable public officials. But Snowden could not have spoken this truth without a truth publisher. In this case, Julian Assange. 
who has become a revered hero to whistleblowers everywhere. This teamwork is an example of how whistleblowing is much more than merely attempting to report wrongdoing because it requires both someone willing to speak truth and someone willing to report that whistleblowers, what the whistleblowers are disclosing. Ed Snowden is a genuine whistleblower because he only spoke from his own personal knowledge, not from something borrowed from someone else. It is, it is what both qualifies someone as a whistleblower and also exposes genuine whistleblowers to retaliation. We are supposed to have protections for whistleblowers in the case of federal whistleblowers, the U.S. Office of Special Counsel, and the System of Inspectors General. But Ed, in Ed Snowden's case, as well as the case of more than 15,000 other federal whistleblowers, now show that protection is worse than a sham because the two high-profile federal programs designed and funded to protect federal whistleblowers, the U.S. Special Counsel and the Council of Inspectors General on Integrity and Efficiency, instead have been the principal agents for a war on whistleblowers. I can say this with great confidence because my group of whistleblowers who joined together over the last six years to investigate this war on whistleblowers have confirmed there is a vast network of corrupt federal officials who systemically obstruct whistleblowers' investigations to enrich themselves and preferred others. The cost of this war can be measured not only in dollars, tens of billions, if not trillions of dollars, but also in injuries, damages, and the deaths of many in the U.S. and around the world. This unconscionable abuse of power has been widely reported to other federal agencies and to dozens of members of Congress who have failed to take any action to protect either whistleblowers or the American people. Thus, protecting Julian Assange and Ed Snowden can only be done by recognizing and ending the broad war on whistleblowers their cases represent. Whistleblowers United, which I represent, has released hundreds of documents to the public by putting them in the public record with the National Archives and Record Administration, NARA, and will soon release new documents showing beyond any doubt that this corrupt network exists, identifying hundreds of corrupt officials and political actors and describing their criminal activities. We will then demand that these officials be removed, investigated, and prosecuted to hold them accountable for their wrongdoing. That is the only way to end this war and restore faithful truth-tellers and publishers of truth-telling their rightful place in our society. This is a statement from the OSHA WPP, former OSHA WPP investigator and lawyer, Daryl Whitman. My name is Edward Escobar. I'm the founder of the Alliance for Independent Workers, and uh, our organization is comprised of whistleblowers. Uh, we are whistleblowing on the shortcomings of the transportation industry and the protections that are not being provided by OSHA, uh, the enforcement of protections, the, the proper uh, uh, safe environments for workers to do their job, also the p lack of PPE not being provided to workers and proper social distancing within the workplace. We, we promote a safe return to work. And Americans want to succeed, not just survive, and that's what we've been reduced to is barely surviving. So I'm Edward Escobar. Thanks for your attention. So, this I live in San Francisco. We don't have, I live in San Francisco. We don't have the vote in California. We have representatives who run term after term after term with absolutely no opposition of their party, which is why I have not been able to, vo I, I have not been able to vote because we can't even vote for third parties in San Francisco in the general election because of this uh, uh, only two. 
third parties have been eliminated. We have this woman who calls herself progressive. Meanwhile, she supports coups in Venezuela. She calls this crazy usurper President Juan Guaido. After she ripped up President Trump's State of the Union speech, she met in the hallway of Congress and addressed this fascist as President Guaido. So I am asking for real progressive legislation and I'm asking for a speaker who can actually speak and not just mumble her words. I'm asking for a speaker of the house that fights for the people and instead of throwing away 1.8 trillion dollars because of election shenanigans, now she is actually saying that half of that is a good deal. Even a five-year-old knows that if you take half of the money you promise him away, that is not a good deal, okay? And this woman, who's supposedly progressive, is tying rags around our, our mouths. By the way, she has probably, at a conservative estimate, uh, $1,000 invested in face masks. Meanwhile, we have rags tied around uh, our mouths because we can't really talk. We have a media uh, that is corrupt, a media that lies. Uh, it won't tell you that Hunter Biden, uh, I mean, The Intercept, a left-wing publication, views to tell the truth about Hunter Biden and Glenn, Glenn Greenwald was was forced to quit. So we need we need a progressive legislator who's going to stand up and who's not going to tie our mouths. Who's going to let truth 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 uh, 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 people of of truth tellers like Julian Assange. Uh, Let him talk. Let him tell the truth. Let the people know. Uh, stop crucifying the people in this country who are in food lines, who are losing their apartments. Help them. Stop helping the rich and your $7.5 million dollar house here. You know, good luck. Every single one of us as Americans are guaranteed basic fundamental rights and freedoms that are enshrined in our constitution. But we cannot take these freedoms for granted. I've introduced legislation to stand up for and to protect brave whistleblowers who've come forward to expose illegal actions within our own government or egregious abuses of power and to reform the Espionage Act to make sure that if a whistleblower is prosecuted under the Espionage Act, that they will have their fair day in court, something that is currently not allowable under the law as it stands today. So first I introduced HRS 1162 with my colleague, Congressman Matt Gates, that very simply calls on our government to drop all charges against Edward Snowden for the actions that he took in the public interest to expose a mass government surveillance program on all Americans that violates our privacy and civil liberties and that courts deemed illegal more than once. I also introduced HRS uh, 1175 with my colleague, Congressman Tom Massey, which calls for the same action for the government to drop all charges against Julian Assange, who also acted in the pub uh, public interest as he published information to expose lies and egregious abuses of power in our own government. Last but not least, I introduced a bill, uh, H.R. 8452, to reform the Espionage Act. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg was the first person prosecuted under the 1917 Espionage Act for his act of bravery in releasing the Pentagon Papers to the Washington Post to publish classified documents that exposed the lies that were being told to the American people about what was really happening in the Vietnam War. Now Snowden, Assange, and others are being prosecuted under this same Espionage Act. 
But as Daniel Ellsberg knows well, under current law, none of them are allowed to speak to the intent of their actions in court. My bill changes that. I'm urging my colleagues in Congress to stand up for the American people, to stand up for our freedoms, and pass this critical legislation now.